Hi. So, Joey Kidney made a video a couple days ago called To All the Girls That Have Loved Me, and in it he basically talks about how he feels like he's unable to love. But I'm a hopeless romantic, and right now, I'm a, I'm a hopeless romantic finding it very hard to love. I'm putting my love out there, and I'm, I'm being genuine, I'm being humble, and I truly, really like the person. But then, when it all comes down to it, and they like me back, I get fucking terrified. I get so scared, and my feelings just shut off. Which is really interesting timing for me because it's something that I've been thinking about a lot lately. It's been coming up in a lot of articles on my news feeds, people talking about the fear of vulnerability and the fear of love and wanting to give up on love. Firstly, I think it's so great that someone like him, who is notorious for being kind of a self-proclaimed hopeless romantic is being so open and candid about something like this. Because it really is something that has become so pervasive in modern dating and the way that we approach relationships. People are so terrified of being vulnerable and getting hurt. They dance around feelings or they ghost people or they just shut off completely like Joey talked about. It's why dating is how it is now. All these new ubiquitous terminologies like almost relationships and situationships. People would almost rather have this air of not caring. Keeping things very casual. Like it's a game and if you're the one who cares, you lose. His video really struck a chord with me because I've been on both sides of this situation. I've been where Joey is and more recently I've become the girls that he's apologizing to. So it's probably safe to say I'm decently versed on this. <laughs> when I was 16, 17, very wide-eyed and romantic, I had my first chance at an actual sort of boyfriend. I liked him for about a year by the time he took interest. We had had some kind of near misses I think before then where we mutually liked each other but neither of us did anything about it and it just didn't end up happening. So when he finally did make a move, he wanted to get to know me, take me out on dates, all very normal, reasonable parts of having feelings for someone. And even though I wanted to so badly, I was terrified. I was just so completely plagued by the kind of fear that makes you push things away that you really truly want. God, I, I remember when he told me he liked me. He told me over text, and I want to say it was over winter break because we weren't seeing each other in person. God, I, ugh, I still kind of hate myself for being this person, but I basically told him that I liked him too, but that I wasn't sure if I wanted to be involved with anybody. And I think if I recall correctly, I basically asked him if I could think about it and let him know in a couple days. Ugh, which like, oh God, don't, please don't do that to someone. Like don't, just don't, don't follow my example. That's, it's cruel. Don't do that to somebody like. I, I make no excuses for myself, except that I was like supremely messed up and I have felt bad about that ever since. But it was never because I didn't like him. It was because I liked him a lot and it terrified the fire out of me. And at this time, I'm like super inexperienced and pretty gun shy. I had grown up watching very destructive love and seeing no real healthy functional couples around me. And coupled with that, I was so riddled with insecurity and incredibly low self-worth at that point in my life that I truly believed that if he got to know the real me and he found out the capital T truth, that he wouldn't like me anymore. And I think on some level I knew that my already very fragile sense of self couldn't possibly take that blow. My friends at the time didn't even know the real me. I don't think anyone did. So in my head, Especially because we were in high school and it was like our junior year, which is so close to graduation. It wasn't an if he left, it was a when, it was an inevitability. And 
I think in my mind, the risk wasn't worth the reward. So we danced around each other for nearly a year before I kind of realized that I'm pushing him away because I'm scared. There's really so much that goes on in your head with something like this. I think I knew I was scared, but I wasn't self-aware enough yet to really understand why or to see just how fully it was affecting me and the situation. For instance, I pined after this guy for literally months before he really showed an interest in me. I thought he was great, I wanted him to like me, and then as soon as he liked me back, it was like my brain started trying to find any reason it could not to like him. It's like your brain, your brain is working so hard to be on the defensive and to stop you from feeling any kind of pain that it will actually literally trick you sometimes in ways that you're not even aware of to try to stop that potential pain from happening. It really is this insidious thing that works very quietly in there and that's why it's so kind of hard to understand. You're so confused within yourself that I think how you come across to other people is really difficult for them to figure out. So basically, somehow, I had found the gumption and I had decided that I was going to just talk to him about it. Because I kind of realized by this point that he probably was so confused. Like, he probably just thought that I was just a huge bitch who was just like, leading him on for fun or something, I don't know. So I kind of was just gonna be honest and just be like, look, I am sorry that I've been all over the place, but I just really like you and it's very intimidating and scary to me. But he took the liberty of ending things before I really could kind of do that. So, which totally understandable, honestly. It taught me a really indispensable lesson though that I will forever be grateful for. It hurt, that's the thing. I'd spent months keeping him at arm's length, terrified of letting him in. I thought that if I kept the upper hand that I'd be sparing myself the pain, but in the end, I'd just been kidding myself. Because even if I wasn't vocal about the depth of my feelings for him, they still very much existed. Even though sometimes it didn't feel like it, and it felt like they were sort of shut off, and it felt like I could sort of find all these things about him that I didn't like and, and make myself not like him anymore, in the end, that wasn't the case. So I decided then and there that I was never gonna make that mistake again. I mean, <laughs> if you're gonna get hurt regardless, you may as well just be all in, right? I'm not really someone who catches feelings a lot. So it was a long time between then and the next time that I had feelings for someone. About six years? Enough time spent alone and forcing myself to work through my various issues that I really kind of grew into myself and I became more confident and I learned how to love myself. Which, as cliche as that is, and I don't really believe that you have to love yourself before someone else can love you, I think it definitely helps the whole process a lot. Because if you can't love yourself and if you don't feel like you're worthy of love, it's sometimes hard to believe that other people could feel that way for you. And so when I met the next boy, being vulnerable didn't seem so scary anymore. Which is really interesting because my entire MO kind of took a turn. I went from being this incredibly shy, insecure girl who pined from a distance and never said how she felt and ran headlong in the other direction when the opportunity of anything real was presented to me, to the kind of woman who could pursue someone and be incredibly forthright about my feelings in a way that I never imagined that I would be capable of. Which brings us to now. Last year, I met a boy. <laughs> and I don't know if it was karma or what, but he reminded me so much of how I was back then. So now I've been on the other side of the same situation. Liking someone who is too afraid to like you back. It's like I've come full circle. It's, it's great. I love it. I don't know why we're so afraid of love when it's one of the most redeeming qualities that we possess. But we are. There are lots of psychological theories about it. No one's really afraid of love, though. They're afraid of the consequences of it. So maybe you're afraid they'll see the real you and not like it, like I was. Or you're afraid to get attached to anything in life because it always ends one way or another. Maybe your parents had a really dysfunctional relationship 
Or maybe they had such a great relationship that you feel like there's no way you can ever live up to that. Maybe you've been hurt really badly by a past relationship and you don't want to go through that again. Maybe you feel like you don't deserve someone's love or you don't deserve to be happy because you don't think yourself worthy. Ultimately, they all boil down to different, bigger fears. A fear of loss, a fear of pain, a fear of not being good enough, maybe a fear of failure. There are really dozens of reasons that someone might feel this way. There are also attachment styles at play, which is a really interesting thing to think about when you look at how you function in love. I'm planning on making a whole video about that because it really deserves its own piece, so stay tuned for that. But the basic gist is there are two main types of attachment styles. There's insecure and there's secure. If you have issues being vulnerable and you're afraid of love, odds are you fall into the insecure category. But your style can be changed with awareness and effort. I don't know, I just think it sucks how prevalent of a thing this is because people who feel this way, they want love. They do. God, I, I wanted it more than anything. But it was like I just couldn't let myself have a chance at it. It's very much like a self-sabotage thing. I was just lucky that I went through an experience that kind of enabled me to figure it out pretty early on. And having been there and come out the other side of it, I just think it's really important to be aware and be mindful of it because it's the only way that it will change. And if you're feeling like this, really step back and get introspective with yourself. See a therapist if you need to. Try to figure yourself out how you're feeling and why you're feeling it. <sighs> I don't even really have a proper point to this, but I know how stupidly common it is to feel like this and I know how badly it sucks. So just know it doesn't have to be that way. You just have to be willing to work on it. You have to be willing to try. It's like that New York Times article, I know what you think of me, whose finishing line is this. If we want the rewards of being loved, we have to submit to the mortifying ordeal of being known. <sighs> this is probably gonna be the longest video I've ever made, but I have a lot of feelings and it happens sometimes. I hope you're all having a beautiful day, week, month, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.